Hello, this video on risk management talks about liquidity risk, which occurs when banks don't have enough cash to meet their depositor withdrawal requests. And so when a bank is so cash trapped, it may be forced to either take out a quick loan or borrow, or sorry, uh, quickly liquidate some of its assets at uh, often less than market value in order to meet these unexpected withdrawal requests. And so the liquidity problem at banks actually occurs because traditionally banks are financing long-term investments, which are those real estate and commercial loans that they have in their portfolio with uh, short-term funding. Because a lot of the uh, funds that banks have are actually customer deposits, which are short-term. You deposit today and tomorrow you take it out, or at least part of it. And so to delineate the essence of this problem, consider this simple bank balance sheet. Now here, total inflow of funds is 100, of which 90 came in the form of customer deposits, and the remaining 10 is actually equity, uh, the bank's equity capital. Currently, assume there are no uh, borrowings, such as in a bank loans and stuff like that. Now out of this 100, the bank keeps 10 in cash in reserves and the re remaining uh, 90 is uh, the bank's core business lending out money to uh, to individual and uh, corporate customers and so here's the problem that might arise suppose that suddenly depositors these fine depositors out here decide to unexpectedly withdraw 15 million bucks why is that a problem because the bank has only 10 has only 10 million uh, uh, in uh, reserves so with uh, no new deposits to replace um, the uh, withdrawals made, the bank certainly has uh, a situation that it has to attend to pretty quickly. What are the options? Well, it must either consider taking out uh, some borrowings right here or liquidating some of these uh, $90 million of assets so as to raise the additional $5 million bucks right after it's uh, liquidated its uh, reserves now if the bank is unable to uh, borrow no uh, to borrow new monies right here then uh, it would be it could be forced to sell some of its uh, long-term loans perhaps um, at a fire sale meaning at a fraction of their face value in order to quickly raise the cash so for example, to get the extra five million bucks, the bank might go ahead and sell eight million dollars of its loans. But that leads to a loss of uh, three million. The bank must then uh, write off the loss of three uh, million against its um, equity. So that with a starting equity a balance of 10 million right here, uh, the loss of uh, 3 million on the fire sale leaves the bank with an ending net worth, as you can see right here, of 7 million. So this is um, a situation that could arise if in fact the bank, I the bank faces such um, a taxing liquidity problem. Basel III, uh, as part of its uh, recommendations following the 2008 financial crisis, uh, recommends two important liquidity uh, ratios as a way to monitor and measure banks' liquidity problem. First is liquidity coverage ratio, and the second is net stable funding ratio. Liquidity ratio, which is so calculated, is designed to ensure that banks have the capacity to survive a 30-day period of liquidity disruptions. So, as you can see, the lower this ratio is, the uh, more challenging the bank's liquidity situation uh, is. Now, the uh, net stable funding ratio, on the other hand, focuses on liquidity management over a slightly longer period, all right? In this case, uh, over a one-year period, and designed to uh, ensure that banks have sufficient long-term stable funding sources. What's the long-term stable funding uh, sources? It's going to be customer deposits, any bank borrowings, and the bank's equity capital that can be used to cover their long-term assets, mostly those loans that banks have. So a little bit more about this uh, is described right here. And uh, that's a wrap.